Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. This past Friday, my husband and I took our 17-month-old to the park. And this isn't an abnormal occurrence. We take him almost every day. But we took him bright and early Friday morning for many hours because we wanted to take advantage of the glorious sunshine before this weekend of rain that we had. And every time we approach the park, just like this Friday morning, as we get closer, my son begins to run from his walk and he begins to squeal with glee because he knows where we're going. So this Friday, we watched as he went to the big playground with so many different equipments to check out. So he climbed up all the play structures. He learned how to slide down the slide for the first time. Big moment. (laughs) And he made his way to the sandbox, digging and digging with his shovel and bucket for a long time. But finally, he made it to his favorite spot, the green space. And one of the things that makes us chuckle, but also makes us really happy for our son is that he likes to pick up trash and give it to us. And we (laughs) we put it in the bin. That's our great big activity and we take joy. But his, his favorite activity when we go to any park every day is he likes to run around each of the tree trunks. And then when he's done running around, he likes to give the tree a big hug and feel the bark and what that texture is like. And it just gives us such joy that he's discovering all these things anew in all of creation. And as he discovered all of these things, my husband and I got to talking about the various trees around the park, because there were quite a few. And each of the trees was in a various stage of development for our springtime season. Some of them had little white buds, Other of them had gorgeous cherry blossoms. Some were already in the deep phase of growth with branches full of green leaves. And it was glorious to to take in all of this springtime growth. And there was one tree that was out of the ordinary among the many. And it was barren and pretty wintry looking. And with this abundance of growth, we wondered if something was wrong with the tree. Maybe it had a disease or was in some sort of ill health. So I walked closer to the tree, and to my delight, I saw these tiny little buds just waiting to spring forth into blossoms. Springtime, resurrection, new life is all around us. And really, resurrection is in the DNA of all creation. Sometimes we take it for granted because as each season passes, it's very predictable and we know what's to come. With the growth and new life of spring, the maturation and glory of the summer, with the decline and death in the fall, dormancy in the winter, and sure enough, new life again in the spring. We know it. We love it. Sometimes we take it for granted. But I wonder about resurrection in our human creation. How often we think of bodily resurrection. Now, in the Gospel of Luke this morning, we hear about the resurrected Christ appearing to the disciples. And you may think we heard about it last week with our famous passage of Thomas touching Jesus' wounds and coming to belief. But in the Gospel of Luke, there's actually six instances that portray the resurrected Christ in the narrative. And this one is pretty dramatic. The disciples are behind closed and locked doors, and they are afraid. They're trying to make sense of the events that happened in Jerusalem with Jesus just a little while ago. From that last meal they had, where he broke the bread and shared the wine and commanded his disciples to remember him whenever they got together around a shared table and meal. To the prayers, to the betrayal, to the trial, to the death. They know that. And while Jesus taught throughout his ministry that his death would never be the end of the story, I'm sure in the moment 
in their death and in grieving, that resurrection reality might be hard to come to. And nonetheless, Jesus appears to the disciples behind these locked doors and says, peace be with you. What a nice, calming greeting. But I can imagine it only did so much when they were literally seeing the bodily form of Jesus in their midst when they saw him suffer and die. What's more is Jesus tries to calm their nerves and show them that is really him. He invites them to look at the wounds in his hands and feet. He invites them even to touch them, to give them understanding and peace. And with joy and shock and believing, they're still trying to make sense of it all. And Jesus interrupts this whole moment with a very human bodily need. He's hungry. And he asks his friends and followers for some food. And with all of this having to deal with all this shocking news, being the host of the space and offering food is something that they can readily do. So they fetch him a piece of broiled fish, and there at the table together, Jesus eats, and the disciples finally, I imagine, get this sense of ease. They remember, we've been here before, we've done this before. Every time we gather, we gather with Jesus Christ. Here or in his absence, we break the bread, we remember Jesus' command to love each other and to serve everyone. This communion table, we remember, this is one of the most ancient practices of Christianity, which we enact every single Sunday to remember Christ's call for us. In this gospel, Jesus commands the disciples to remember who he is, the teacher, the one who heals, the one who brings everyone to the table from brokenness of the world and brings them to love, forgiveness, and renewal. And we come to this table receiving the bread and the wine, remembering Jesus' command is also for us. We're to be nourished at this table so that we can go out and to love and serve. Now, we are a people meant for communion and resurrection, especially when we get out of the doors from this building. So what does that mean in a world where people are hungry? In a, peop- in a world where people don't have access to a table, where we can be with others? How do we work for justice and love in our community so that all know a table and all know that they are fed? When we gather at our tables, if we have one, maybe the food that we get on our tables, it's likely that we don't know where it comes from. I'm sure when Jesus got that broiled fish, the disciples knew exactly who caught the fish and at what part of the sea it was at and how it was prepared. This moment of communion and honor for all creation. But the fish we often bring to our table comes uh, packaged in plastic and styrofoam. It's often from fish overfished in the oceans or polluted farming practices. The produce that comes from our table is often from big monocropping farms that only grow one thing and strip the land of all of its nutrients and strip us from our nutrition and connection. It strips us from knowing who grew our food and how they're treated. It denies us communion with each other and with all of creation. So where is the hope in this? The hope is coming back to that resurrection moment coming back to Christ in our midst, remembering that each one of us is called to communion and resurrection, and that we can learn new things and try on new things to bring more and more of that reality into our being. Especially when we celebrate Earth Day, albeit early, but I think that that invites us to try on more Earth-friendly practices for a whole entire season, not just a day. Maybe you're already trying on really good practices, like eliminating plastic, or going to the local food co-op where everyone can be served. Maybe you're curious about getting more education on sustainable farming practices. Go out to meet your farmers, get some of their food, experience these small kind of permaculture systems where the 
plants and animals are honored. Invite someone to your table if you have one. Accept an invitation to someone else's table if you're hungry or in need of fellowship. We have all of these moments where we can invite more and more resurrection and communion into our life. But finally, just every day when you're outside, take in the beauty of all of creation, especially in the spring. Experience the DNA of resurrection all around you and find where you're called to join in God's action. Amen. <laughs>